Welcome to Assist My Team Small and Medium Business Solutions. In this demonstration, we will explore how to analyze Microsoft Access Database and extract business intelligence using OLAP statistics and reporting tool. One sensed odd, you would find these three shortcuts in your start menu. OLAP statistics consists of two utilities, the Access Manager and the Statistics Client tool. Let us start with the Access Manager. This utility enables us to connect to an access database and then configure to generate a cube. Let us take an example of running OLAP statistics and reporting on the North Wind Trader sample database. This database comes with a transaction table, order details, which is related to other tables by foreign key relationships. Therefore, it is a perfect candidate to be a fact table. In the OLAP Access Manager, notice that all other fields from related tables which are linked through foreign keys, such as orders, customers, employees, or categories, are automatically pulled out for possible inclusion into the OLAP cube. Here, I can select which fields are to be included into the statistics. You will notice that background color of the selected field changed to light red to be easily distinguishable from the others. You also have the option to specify your own caption for the selected fields that are to be included into the statistics. By default, it displays the caption of field as defined in the table schema. If the caption is empty, it automatically takes the field name. Now, let us create our own hierarchy member having parent-child relationships between the table member fields. Up to five levels of parent-child members are supported to form a hierarchy. For example, we can define a new hierarchy, say, region-wise, and comprising of country as the parent member, and region as the second member, and city as the third member, and all these belonging to the orders table. We can also add a new calculated field using this button. Say, we want to compute the total sales from all our orders. This would require multiplying the unit price to quantity and then add the freight charge. Now, let us define that operation here. I will name this calculated field as total sales and choose the unit price from the first drop down and multiply that with the quantity and of course add the freight charge to it one important thing to note here is the effect of mathematical operator precedence you can control the correct precedence with these two check options also notice that the actual computational formula which will be used in the cube is being generated here composite hierarchy and calculated members will have a green background in the grid to distinguish from the fields of the tables. To readjust existing composite hierarchy or calculated members, just double-click the corresponding row to pop up the dialog box with all the previous settings in place. Now that we have chosen which fields or dimensions to include in the statistic, one last step remains before we could create an OLAP cube which is configuring a few fields as OLAP measures for the cube. To define a measure field, all we need to do is select one of the aggregate function from this corresponding drop-down list. I can specify between count, distinct count, sum, average, maximum or minimum function. And this would be used to generate an aggregated computation value on this particular member measure field. For example, I will select quantity to be aggregated with the sum function and the discount with maximum function. We are almost done here. Now, let us generate a cube and analyze it using the OLAP statistics client tool by pressing this button. Depending upon the amount of data, it might take a few seconds before the OLAP client loads up the cube. Now, let us explore the statistic in more detail. 
This is the cube structure, and contains measures and hierarchies, or simply, all the chosen database fields, in a tree-like representation. To select a measure for display, you need to drag and drop it to the measures panel, or the data area. To select a hierarchy for display, drag and drop it to the pivot panel, which basically is the rows or columns area. The statistical data is then displayed in this working area. You can add multiple measure fields, at a time, to generate each of its own aggregated statistics. This is the OLAP grid panel, and comprises of a multi-dimensional table, with expandable nodes. It allows you to effortlessly, drill up, or drill down on data, or filter and sort, using powerful built-in menus. One of the greatest benefits is that it allows users to explore, navigate, and refine data until the desired snapshot is achieved. This is the OLAP chart panel, and allows representing the data graphically. For example, if I want to know which categories has the highest total sales, I will drag the total sales field in the measure area, and the category name field to the columns area. Here. I can easily infer, beverages constitutes the highest sales, whereas produce has the lowest. I can also change the chart style to suit to my own choice and reports requirement. So, with the OLAP chart, one can perceive statistical data quickly and easily without dealing with numbers. To track the sales and quantity over a period of time. I can add a second dimension, say, order date, to the columns area. Now this will give a multi-dimensional view of the statistics, with lot of useful information for managing real use. I can also drill down the order year to quarter, and further to months. For instance, I can easily see the total sales amount for August that was generated from Seattle for the year 1994. This statistical tool also allows for easy selection on what data you want to see and what you do not. You can apply powerful filters to anything including hierarchy members and measure values to leave out the unimportant data. Now, let us explore some other features and toolbars. The Synchronize option allows you to reflect the state of the statistics from the grid to chart or vice versa. It is particularly useful, for example, when you have built up a grid with aggregated data but want a more visual representation of the statistics in the form of graphs and bars. Do note here, each of the grid and the chart view can also be worked independently. At any time, once a particular snapshot of the statistics is achieved, you can save the current state of the statistics of grid or chart as a report view. A report view is the current state of the statistics in the grid or chart working area, with specific member fields on the rows and column areas, and measure fields in the values area. Once saved, you can open it to get to the same state of the statistics in the grid or chart in subsequent use. To give a try, let us reset the grid and chart controls and open this report view that we had saved earlier. As you see here, we are able to get back to the previous state of statistics without starting from scratch. Once a cube schema has been authored using the OLAP Access Manager, it is no necessary to run the statistics from the Access Manager. To demonstrate, loading a live OLAP cube from the Northwind database, which we had configured with Access Manager some time ago, let us shut down this OLAP statistics client tool. And this time, we will start it from the Programs menu, directly, by passing the Access OLAP Manager. Now, from within this OLAP statistics client, you can directly connect to a configured cube by selecting a schema file from the file menu.
and this will generate a live cube from the North Wind database. Let us open the report view again that we saved just some time ago to get to the desired snapshot of the statistics without starting from scratch. If you have loaded a live cube from a database, you have the option to save the entire cube data to a file for offline use. Offline cube can be saved in compressed or uncompressed format, the former option being able to reduce the file size considerably. An offline cube gives the same functionality as that of a live cube, except that the data in the offline cube is only current to the time the cube was saved to the file. This provides the flexibility to continue analyzing the cube and generate reports, even when you are disconnected from the network or when you are on the move. Now that we have successfully designed a report, let us save it for future reference or to share it with others. You can save the data snapshots to Excel, Adobe PDF, XML, or to bitmaps and web pages. You can also print the reports using this button. With this export settings, you can customize the appearance of the reports to be printed or saved. Here, you can specify the page size, orientation, headers, and footers, and color of the fonts and page background. The user interface that you see here is very interactive and highly customizable. You can place the various components to different location and style, depending on personal taste. For example, you can auto-hide the component panels, so that you can have a maximum working area on the grid or chart control. If you want to hide all panels and only display the grid or chart control, you can choose Show Data Panel Only. This gives you a large area to analyze the statistics efficiently. At any time, you can get to the original default layout by clicking this Show All Panels menu. Whatever changes or placements the panels take, this tool will remember the last layout settings in subsequent sessions. So, we have seen, with the OLAP statistics and reporting tool, it is very easy and effortless to analyze and generate reports and extract business intelligence from an access database. This concludes this video demonstration on OLAP statistics for and reporting for Microsoft Access. For more elaborate documentation, you can refer to the help manual.